Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Now, if we go to John chapter 11, there's a story of um, Brother Lazarus. Brother Lazarus whom Jesus loved, who died and was raised back to life. Um, I can't read the whole um, chapter. It will take a lot of time, but I'll be skipping a few lines and then we can go through it together and see how Jesus was able to use this threefold operation to raise Lazarus back to life. Wonderful operation. Wonderful insight. John 11, I read from verse 1. <clears throat> now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment, wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent a message to Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, him you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, now, the first declaration is coming up immediately. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So he started with the confession. So sometimes you can start with the confession, or you can start with the prayer, and then the corresponding action. You can start with the prayer, and then the confession. You can start with the confession, then march into prayer. How did Elijah do his own? He started with the confession. He said, there shall be no dew, nor rain according to my word. So he first said to, he said to Ahab, Ahab, I think it's 1 Kings 17 or so or 18. He said, Air, go. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. He said, run before the rain catches up with you. So he made his declaration first. Then he went up to the mountain to pray. Then he prayed. And anytime he would pray, he would put his head in between his knees. And he would tell his servant, what do you see? He said, the sky is clear. The seventh time he said, I see a small cloud, dark cloud like, like the hand of a man. He said, let us go. The rain is coming. So sometimes you may declare your, make your declaration before the prayers. And sometimes you make your prayers before the declaration, depending on the circumstance you find yourself. But you must put the three together. They work together. One alone will not work. The three work together. So in verse 4, Jesus started this crisis with a confession, with a declaration. Now let's go on. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When Jesus had therefore heard he was sick, he abode two days, still in the same place where he was. Then after that said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. His disciples said to him, Master, the Jews of late st sought to stone thee, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, I there not twelve hours in a day. If any man walk in a day, he stumbleth not, because he seemeth that the light, he said the light of, the, of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbled, because there is no light in him. This thing said he, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. He is making the second declaration again. So that's why we said importunity. You don't say it once and keep quiet. You keep saying it in variations. He said, um, first, he said, this sickness is not going to lead on to death. Then he refused to say Lazarus is dead. He said, Lazarus is sleeping. And I'm going to wake him up. By that time, he knew Lazarus was dead. So he said, Lazarus is sleeping. He's not dead. So he began the conquest of this situation, with, of this crisis, with declarations. He said, Lazarus sleepeth. And his disciples said, ah, they didn't understand what he was saying. And the conversation went on and on and on and now i'm going to jump you all know the story when he now went to judea to lazarus house and i'll read from verse um okay 30 now jesus was not yet come to town but was in that place where Martha met him the jews then which were with her in the house and confronted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily, went out, followed her, saying, She's going to the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. 
And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Verse 38. Jesus therefore again groaning himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take away the stone. So Jesus started with a declaration. Then to a corresponding action. Then he's not going to go to prayers. So, so there's no order. But the three must go together. But there's no order. Now, Jesus said in verse 39, take away the stone. Mother said the sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Jesus said to her, said I not unto thee that if you would believe, you will see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Now Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father. Now he began to pray. You can see the three walking together in Jesus. That's why Jesus had results. That's why he had results. And that's what he was trying to teach them when he said, Lord, teach us to pray. People think Jesus' prayer, prayers were answered because he's the son of God. No, it's not a title. The prayers don't get answered because of title. You, don't, you can be apostle, you can be archbishop, you can be anything. In fact, there are lots of ministers like that. Their prayers don't get answered because they don't know how to pray. They don't understand the workings of the principle of successful prayer or result-oriented prayer. Now, here Jesus started with a declaration. Then he varied the declaration. Then he went on to a corresponding action. He said, take away the stone. Then at that tomb, he began to pray. He said, Father, in verse 41, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Okay. Meaning he might have prayed first earlier that is not recorded because he's now referring to a previous discussion with the Father. I thank you because you had heard me. So he actually started with prayers. Or he started with a declaration. Then he prayed. Then he came to um, corresponding action. Then he prayed again. So the three is not a one-time thing. You can take the prayer once, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Confession can be endless till you get the result. The corresponding action could be one or two or three. But the three must vary and work together. Otherwise, there will be no result. And that's why you see people without result. And they look as if... God answers a special kind of people. God has no respect of person. He has no special person he's answering anywhere. And then he continued his declaration. You could see the variation um, in verse 42. And I knew that you heard me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that you have sent me. And when he has thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. So he ended up with the declaration. So how did he start? Prayers, declaration, Corresponding action, prayers, declaration. All working together. And he got the result. So it varies based on what you are facing. Now, um, that's a technical aspect to let you understand what brings results in prayers. And um, I can tell you I've seen phenomenal, mind-boggling results. <clears throat> Just praying very simple prayers, but adhering to this principle. Um, there was once I was in a ministry and were to start a church in Port Harcourt. So I was in the team that went to start the um, start the church. We had to look for a place, get members and everything, do evangelism and stuff like that. And so we um, we've been going about witnessing and praying with people. And then we set a date to start the church. So the pastor who will be in charge of the church asked me to get um, sheets because people are coming for the first time. Then we didn't have all this projector. He said I should get some sheets that they could go through so that they won't be lost in the praise and worship. So it was a Saturday. We had to start on Sunday. So it was in Porter Court. I think it's called Rumo, Rumo Coro or something like that. It's been many years now. So I went to a business center. And they had to type the way they did the song sheet. 
the lady just took it took a long time for her to be get it because we had songs divided on this side and on this side it took a while and by the time i was done they were to close at five o'clock i was done around past four almost four thirty and i needed to print like 40 sheets of the um, song sheets so when it was time to print she finished the setting you know what they call i think setting or so and then there was a business center and all the shops there, I think it was six o'clock they were closed. It was about 5.30 or so and all the shops were. So I knew we had to hurry up. So the manager was saying, let's hurry up, they're about to close. So I said, okay, print a copy, let me go through it, then we can print the 40 copies. And when she decided to print, they found out the ink had finished. Oh my goodness. They now said they should have a spare ink. Check, 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 check. They could not find there was no spare ink. Even tried to call their other office. They said they don't have ink. It has finished. My goodness. So the man said, there's nothing we can do. As at this time, it was after six. Most of the business centers they had closed. So there was nowhere to go. And I needed the song sheets the next day. It's in the morning. So the man said, I have to come on Monday. I said, no, we need the song sheets tomorrow. He said, there's nothing I can do. The ink has finished. Just before then, a man came. He had given them a job to do. And they had finished his job and he was supposed to go through it. When he finished going through it, they were supposed to print. The ink had finished, they couldn't print. So they said, what do we do? It's finished. I said, just hold on. So I said, Heavenly Father, I need you to send an angel from heaven to come down and get ink wherever and put ink into this printer. I need these things to print. In Jesus' name I pray. One, day, one said, Amen, you know, sarcastically said, Amen, no. Oh. Like, what's wrong with this man? I said, you know what? I prayed. I said, I'm going today from this place with my 40 sheets printed. I made my declaration. I said, now put the, um, the printer back. I said, it's empty. I said, put it back. You can't live with it. They will need a printer for the ink to go in. I said, just put it back and print. She put back the print that was empty, the uh, cartridge, sorry, that was empty and gave the command and my work printed. She said, oh, you know, sometimes you think maybe it's one tiny ink that remains. I said, print another one, it printed. Ah, the man said, I came before you and to print my work before you, thinking maybe the ink is just small so it will finish. I said, print his own. When they put his own, it was blank, no ink. The computer said, no ink. I said, print my own, it came out, it was printed. The man said, what's going on? Print my own again. They printed his own. It was blank. No ink. The angel is giving a command for my work, not his work. When they print, it's in protocol. Rumukuru is just year, um, 19, I think, 99. Or, no, no. 95 or so. I'm trying to remember about 95 or so. And then print his own. Nothing came out again. And they printed 40 copies of mine. The lady of sarcastic said, Eh, I, I think maybe she's from the southeast or so. Eh, whoa, I don't see miracle today. Oh, I will say this is not a miracle. Now, what happened? I prayed, I made declarations, and I took a corresponding action. That man left without a single print on his it's just he just needed about three sheets, it was a letter. He left not being able to print. I left with 40 sheets printed with no ink. Now, God truly answers prayers. Now, I'll, I'll give you another scenario that happened. There's this artist. She sings. Um, she's an international singer, artist. She sings both Nigeria and all over the world. And she's a member of the church. And I remember on this day, just before this day, she was um, in a program in Lagos then. It was a program as a judge in a program. That's a program they were doing, and she was, um, I guess, maybe like one of the judges in that program. Now, she had, the program normally ends like six o'clock, and she had a singing um, entertainment job on the island at Muzon at five. So I told her, take the job, approach the authorities, Tell them about this program that you would love to finish before five. And they agreed that she could take up that um, program, which was on one of the days, because the judging program is a Monday to, 
I think Friday, and the um, singing um, um, job she had at Muzon was on a Thursday evening to start at five. So we needed to leave the place, which is on the mainland, at latest 4.30, we will be against traffic. So we envisage we'll be there by five. So I was in the car with another person, and she was inside, so she came out. I said, it's past four, we need to be getting ready to go. She said, the program is still on, and she cannot leave. I said, but you have another singing um, job at Muzon. It was a fact, it was a big company that invited her band then to come and to sing. I said, you haven't, he said, there's nothing I can do. I said, no, you're not going to disappoint them there. She went back at 4.30. She said they started late. So they said they have to finish, which may run into the night. I said, Jesus. So she went back into the hall. I said, Father, send an angel from heaven to cripple that generator. And within, if you just count, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. By 4, the generator went dead. So they rushed out. Oh, I hope the, <laughs> the organizers of that program will come and sue me. Well, I didn't mention any program. They rushed out. They called the engineer. He started the gen room. They went back in. I was just looking. I said, I've shut it down. I declared my declaration again. I've shut it down. So when I prayed and I asked God to send an angel to shut the generator, I said to the other person, I said, this generator is going dead in less than five minutes. And then that's counting one to 10 by the 10, nine, eight by four, it was dead. So the, the engineers came out, checked one, checked the nozzles, checked this, started it again. I said, it remains dead. As we were entering the hall, it went dead again and there was no electricity. They battled it for 15 minutes and the engineer gave the report, sorry, this generator is out of order for today. So the organizers declared the meeting over. So I got her into the car and got her to the moves on to do her program. Now, look at this threefold operation. I asked God, I made a declaration, and had a corresponding action at the car there to convey her. I didn't say when she finishes, we'll be praying one place. When she finishes, she couldn't. No, no, no. There was a car stationary there. That's a corresponding action to show that we're ready to leave. I asked God to set an idea to shut it down. And I said, no. We time they went away. I said, they're not going to, they won't find the solution. They won't be able to find the solution. And guess what? The next day, the generator worked perfectly without any issue. So what happened? Your guess is as good as mine. Amen. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. I'll give you another testimony. Um, I was in Port Harcourt. I don't know why it's always Port Harcourt. For a program, it was a convention of a church and in that meeting, I told the pastor, I said, I was invited to minister. So when I got off the podium, I said, today, now it, well, I wasn't saying as a hype. Some say it as a hype. Oh, today is your day of miracles. Somebody say, amen. No, I don't do that. I say what I believe is going to happen. So I said, today, anyone here that needs a miracle is getting it. Even before the service commences, I said, if you're deaf, you're going to hear. If you're dumb, you're going to speak. If you're blind, you're going to see. If you're lame, you're going to walk. And right there, they um, brought to my attention that there was a young boy who was about 11 years of age. He was born deaf and dumb. Never heard, never spoke in his entire life. He was there with his mother. And I said, bring him up. They brought him up. Now I want to see, I want you to see how this works. I said, Tell your son he's going to hear now and he's going to speak well now. She signaled to him he should, shook his head. Asked him, does he believe? So I, I told the mother to tell the son, tell your son he's going to hear. Now I was making declarations. He's going to hear now and he's going to speak now. Not tomorrow, now. 
She told him, ask him, does he believe? She said, yeah, he believes. Tell him what's the first thing he wants to hear. You know, I went on. I was just making declarations for about five minutes. I was making declarations and declarations. So I brought him forward, put my hands on him. I didn't pray. I commanded the deaf and the dumb spirit to come out of him. And he began to signal he could hear and he could talk. But he was, he was not talking. He was saying, oh, oh, oh. So when you make sound like this, he will do like this too. When you make sound like this, he will do three. But that's not what I said he was going to do. So I now say, let us pray. After giving the command, binding the uh, demons, casting them out, I say, let us pray. So I say, Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to increase this young man in wisdom to match his contemporaries. He's never been to school. He doesn't know how to hear. He doesn't know how to speak. He doesn't know how to write. He's never been to school. He was born deaf and dumb. Now, I was asking God to accelerate his ability to mimic, to comprehend to the same person of his age that is in school. And I said, amen. I asked him, do you all believe God heard that prayer? He said, yes. I said, now, this is what we're going to do. So I put him on the stage. Now, this is a corresponding action. I said to them, I said, you know what? He can hear. He can understand. He can speak perfectly, plainly. He can write. They were looking at me because... He's never been to school, so he's not supposed to be able to write. Now, I put him on stage, and I subjected him. I said, say after me. I'll read sentences, and he will read them plainly. I'll read lines. He will read them accurately. It's not just to do like this. No, 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 no. That day, that boy was able to write perfectly, was able to speak clearly, plainly. You never knew he was deaf and dumb before. He was able to hear and mimic and understand. He was able to read. I mean, he didn't go to school. He was reading. And then when Mary, he was reading. He was talking. Not saying, oh, oh, oh. No, he was talking. He would call Jesus. He would say, Hallelujah. He would say it accurately, mimicking perfectly. But then I started with declarations. Then I prayed. Then I subjected him to all those actions. Do this, do this. And, uh, and we couldn't even have a service anymore. The whole place just went haywire. That's God. I was just about maybe two, three years in the Lord when I did this, when this happened. I was not even a pastor. Praise God. And I believe you can do much more. You just need to believe and follow this order. I'll share just one more testimony, then I'll close. And I remember again, I was visiting somebody in the hospital. It was a friend. And the church where I worshipped then, he was in the unit where I was. It was I was in the evangelism department. So he was one of the members who was sick. He had appendicitis operation. So I went with um, a few members of the unit to visit him in the hospital. And we prayed. And the nurses hearing us prayed. One of the nurses approached me and said, Sir, uh, you pray now, you ministers? I said, we said, yes. So there's a lady upstairs, a very, really, really bad case that she would really appreciate if we could pray with her. So we went up. She was in a coma. She had oxygen, and they were giving, I think, blood. And it didn't look good. One bit didn't look good. And so it um, was a threefold thing we did. And I asked the nurse, I said, before the close of today, this lady will be up on her feet, walking, running, and giving glory to God. She looked at me in shock. You know, when you know an amen didn't come from within, you just say amen so that she won't offend me. She said amen. I said, she's rising up today. She's going to lift up those two hands. She's going to be perfectly well. She was in a coma. And so we prayed and asked God. And we prayed and prayed and um, I told the um, person that we came to pray for, I said, when she gets up, get her details for me. Now, there's no corresponding action I could do other than a prophetic one. I said, when she gets up, get her details today. Don't go to sleep because she's getting up today. And when I went to visit my friend the next day, I asked of the lady, they said she got up that day. They held her back for about six to five to six hours to do more tests. She was perfectly okay, perfectly strong, perfectly well. 
There is nothing you approach God in prayer. There's so many prayers that have gone to God that he has answered and God is waiting. In that Luke 11, he says, he may not rise because you are the friend, but he will rise because of the importunity, which is the confession. So God is waiting for their confession, but they are not talking. And so the prayers appeared not to be answered. They are all being answered. He went further in that Luke 11. He said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Meaning, whenever you go with that request, God immediately springs into action, but is waiting for your confession and waiting for your corresponding action. He wants to see a follow-up on your request. If I start with testimonies, we will not live here today. Multiple, mind-boggling, beyond comprehension. And most of these testimonies happened when I was just less than three to four years as a Christian. Such a young believer. We just ask God casually. We just take up the confession, follow up on a corresponding action, and we saw phenomenal results. And God is not a respect of persons. You can have phenomenal results. This is the principle that stands between a successful and a failed prayer life. There is no prayer warrior anywhere. There is no prayer guru anywhere. There is no mighty man of prayer. That is not in scriptures. All we have in scripture is any person, whosoever, one month in the Lord, one day in the Lord, 100 years in the Lord, that will approach God with importunity, with boldness, and bring his request, follow it with a confession, and add a corresponding action. And I understand why he told Joshua, the book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, Joshua 1, 8. In that word you meditate there and night, and observe to do, observe to do. He said, then, anything you do, you will prosper. And you will, anywhere you turn to, you will have good success. It has nothing to do with a special relationship with God. If you can follow these principles, it works. And you will get the result. And people are getting results. You see people with big titles, no result. People with no titles, because the big title, they don't know it. People with no titles that they know this, they are getting the result. You can even raise the dead. You can do, you can do the on unimaginable. I believe you have been blessed by that message and I know your faith has been built up and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you are out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.